Hi friends, once again welcome back to my channel Mukambiga Nursing. Friends, here we are discussing questions for RRB Nursing Superintendent exam. Also, these questions will helpful for your MHSRB and other nursing officer exam preparation. Today, we are discussing questions from Pediatric Nursing. And the first question, the nurse assesses an 8th month old language development. Which finding would the nurse consider to be typical language development? Options. Option A. Saying Dada to Father and Mama to Mother. Option B. Saying three other words besides Mama and Dada. Option C. Saying Dada and Mama non specifically. Option D. Saying Mama and Dada while pointing to the parent. Here the question is a nurse is assessing the language development of an 8th month old infant. Among this, which one is the typical language development for the infant? That is our question. Here the age of the infant is 8th month old. So the 8th month old infant can imitate the words of the parents and they can non-specifically tell or say mama and dada. So the correct answer is option C. Saying dada and mama non-specifically by the age of 8th month they are start to develop this speech so they can non-specifically speak. Can't speak specifically mama and dada. Okay. So the correct answer is option C. Move on to the next question. A physician has prescribed oxygen as needed for an infant with congestive heart failure. In which condition the nurse should administer the oxygen to the infant? Options. Option A. During sleep. Option B. During changing the diaper. Option C. When the child is in mother's lap. Option D. When taking investigation blood for lap. Here the question is. A physician ordered oxygen to an infant with congestive heart failure. How he ordered is when needed for an infant, the nurse can give oxygen to the infant. Okay, when needed or when required, nurse can give oxygen to the infant. In our question, in which condition or in which situation the nurse should administer oxygen to the infant? Among this option, we can select option D is the correct answer. Okay, when taking investigation, blood for lab. During lab procedure, due to the pricking, the infant automatically will cry. So, the need of oxygen demand will increase. So, the nurse can administer oxygen during the time of this procedure. And the next question, which of the following is a? Congenital cyanotic heart disease. Options. Option A. Atrial septal defect. Option B. Ventricular septal defect. Option C. Patent ductal, ductus arteriosus. Option D. Transposition of great arteries. The question is, which is a congenital cyanotic heart disease? The most common cyanotic congenital heart defect are 5 T's. That is, tetralogy of pilot, transposition of great arteries, tricuspid atresia, trungus arteriosus, total anomalous permanent venous return. So here in our option, correct answer is option D, transposition of great arteries. Move on to the next question. Which one of the following defect causes obstruction to oxygenated blood flow to all parts of the body? Options. Option A. Pattern ductus arteriosus. Option B. Atrial septal defect. Option C. Aortic stenosis. Option D. Transposition of great arteries. Our question is which defect causes obstruction to oxygenated blood flow to all part of the body? Oxygenated blood or uh, is flowing to part all part of the body by aorta. So it is aortic stenosis. Option C is the correct answer. And the next question. The parent of a nine month old bring the infant to the clinic for a regular checkup. The infant has received no immunizations. Which vaccine if prescribed would the nurse questions? Options. Option A. Diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis. Option B. Haemophilus influenza type B. That is hip vaccine. Option C. Measles, mumps and rubella. Option D. Inactivated influenza. That is flu vaccine. Our question is a 9 month old baby or old infant go to the clinic for a regular checkup, routine checkup. But the infant has not received any immunization. And 
which vaccine if prescribed by the doctor will question the nurse or will ask the nurse why this vaccine is giving first okay and the correct answer is it is mmr vaccine mumps measles and rubella vaccine meaning dpt vaccine can give to the infant hib vaccine also can give and influenza vaccine also can give but mmr will not give at first move on to the next question the mother asked the nurse for advice about discipline for her 18 month old child which discipline strategy should the nurse suggest that the mother use options option a reinforcement option b physical punishment option c reasoning option d time out here our question is a mother of 18 month old child asked the nurse for the advice about disciplinary strategy for her child so which disciplinary strategy does the nurse can suggest to this mother that is our question here the age of the child is 18 month 18 month is coming under toddler for toddler time out is the most appropriate discipline for toddlers it help to remove them from the situation and allow them to regain control in time out what we are doing is we are removing the child from the particular activity for a short period it will help them to remove from that particular situation and can regain its control okay so time out is the appropriate disciplinary strategy for toddlers option d is the correct answer move on to the next question which laboratory study would assist in confirming the diagnosis of rheumatic fever options option a bun blood urea nitrogen option b wbc count option c hb option d aso titer aso means anti streptolysin o titer and the correct answer is it is option d aso titer an elevated aso titer can confirm the diagnosis of rheumatic fever move on to the next question if foramen ovale is not closed after birth of a child then it can affect the child in which way options option a development and growth is affected option b child will true blue option c child will be anemic option d none of the above usually this foramen ovale will close during the time of birth if it is not closed after the birth of a child means it will affect the growth and development of the child so option a is the correct answer move on to the next question tetralogy of fallot is characterized by the following except options option a atrial septal defect option b ventricular septal defect option c over riding of aorta option d pulmonary infundibular of constrictions tetralogy of fallot include four defect that is ventricular septal defect pulmonary stenosis over riding of aorta and right ventricular hypertrophy in our option one option is there pulmonary infundibular constriction that is pulmonary stenosis so here correct answer is option a atrial septal defect remaining all are the features of tetralogy of fallot move on to the next question which of the following is a manifestation of pyloric stenosis options option a projectile vomiting option b regurgitation option c steatorrhea option d tenesmus one of the main manifestation of pyloric stenosis is projectile vomiting so option a is the correct answer move on to the next question three c's coughing and choking during feeding and unexplained cyanosis is associated with our options option a tracheoesophageal fistula option b cleft lip and cleft palate option c pyloric stenosis option d grd Three C's are the manifestation. Three C's include coughing and choking during feeding, and unexplained cyanosis are the manifestation of tracheoesophageal fistula. Option A is the correct answer. And another one important manifestation of tracheoesophageal fistula is frothy saliva in the mouth, mouth and nose, and excessive drooling is one of the important manifestation of tracheoesophageal fistula. Move on to the next question. Most commonly affected heart valve in rheumatic heart disease. Options: Option A, aortic valve. Option B, pulmonary valve. Option C, mitral valve. Option D, tricuspid valve. 
and the correct answer is it is metal wall option c is the correct answer move on to the next question nurse is monitoring a daily weight of an infant with congestive heart failure which of the following alert the nurse to suspect fluid accumulation and need to call the physician our options option a bradypnea option b diaphoresis option c decrease blood pressure option d a weight gain of 1 pound in a day here our question is a nurse is daily monitoring the weight of an infant with congestive heart failure among this which finding suspect there is a fluid accumulation in the infant body and also need to inform this to physician once the fluid accumulation occurs in the body means automatically weight will increase so the correct answer is option d a weight gain of 1 pound in a day Move on to the next question. Double bubble sign in the X-ray is the characteristics of options. Option A: pyloric stenosis. Option B: tracheoesophageal fistula. Option C: Hirschsprung's disease. Option D: duodenal atresia. Here our question: double bubble sign. So in case of duodenal atresia. we can see this double bubble sign duodenal atresia is a congenital closure of a portion of the duodenum x ray of the abdomen shows two large air filled spaces one in this one is in the stomach and other is in duodenum so it is called a double bubble sign it is seen in case of duodenal atresia option d is the correct answer Move on to the next question. A rapid and irregular pulse rate and presence of heart murmur are the sign of options. Option A: angina pectoris. Option B: rheumatoid arthritis. Option C: myocardial infarction. Option D: acute rheumatic fever. A rapid and irregular pulse rate and presence of heart murmur are the sign of acute rheumatic fever. Option D is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Size of suction catheter used in neonate for oral and nasal suction is options. Option A, eight French. Option B, twelve French. Option C, fourteen French. Option D, sixteen French. And the correct answer is it is eight French. Option A is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Cannula size used in newborn baby is. options option a 24 size option b 20 size option c 22 size option d 18 size which cannula is used in newborn and also infant it is 24 in size option a is the correct answer and move on to the next question the fluid requirement per kg of body weight for newborn is options option a 60 to 80 ml option b 100 to 140 ml option c 80 to 100 ml option d 120 to 140 ml fluid requirement per kg of body weight for newborn is 100 to 140 ml option b is the correct answer the fluid requirement of various age group we can see for 0 to 1 year 100 to 120 ml per kilogram of body weight in our option 100 to 140 is there so that be selected at correct answer and for 1 to 2 years it is 100 to 125 ml 2 to 10 years 75 to 100 ml and 11 to 18 years 50 to 75 ml and for adult 40 ml per kilogram of body weight Move on to the next question. Dose of vitamin K in preterm babies. Options: Option A, 0.5 mg. Option B, 1 mg. Option C, 1.5 mg. Option D, 2 mg. The question is: Dose of vitamin K in preterm baby. Okay, it is 0.5 mg. Usually, vitamin K is given in IM only. And the next question: The dose of vitamin K in term babies options option a 0.5 mg option b 1 mg option c 1.5 mg and option d 2 mg previous question was for dose for preterm baby this question is dose for term baby and the correct answer is for term baby 1 mg and for preterm baby 0.5 mg option b is the correct answer friends here we discuss some of the important questions from important and previous year questions from pediatric nursing surely these questions will helpful for your exam preparation if it is useful for your studies please share my videos to your friend circle and also subscribe my channel